we begin this episode with a very earthly scene to provide some context for recent events on Mars. The Perseverance rover deployed its robotic arm for the first time in a way just a bit like this mini excavator. When it pushes its arm down, the front end lifts up. This helps maximize the force on the jackhammer. The arm on Perseverance needs to apply a lot of force on the rock core in order to keep from walking across the surface when cutting first starts. Anyone who's ever drilled into hard material knows what this is like. The robotic arm overdrives its motors to produce at least 300 newtons, or about 67 pounds, of force on the core. I'll be showing images from some of the many cameras on the rover, so some introductions are in order. The nav cams are mounted on the mast, and the front has cams are down low on the rover body. There's a structure at the front of the rover that I've wondered about, but haven't seen its name. Now I at least know that it's used by the robotic arm. The Watson camera recently imaged it as part of the first rover selfie. It's a place where the rover can safely flex its robotic arm and test the preload force on the two stabilizers before placing them on the surface of a rock. And that's what it did for the first time on Sol 82. Seen from the front Hascam, the arm places the stabilizers on a nice flat rock and then pushes down. It looks like the mighty arm manages to push the Martian surface down a few centimeters, but obviously it's the rover lifting up. This is the same action that the mini excavator showed, but here the rover's suspension flexes so the wheels stay on the ground while the body and has cams lift up. This same rock was zapped by the laser on Supercam. Here's a lab test that really shows what's going on. The first thing to notice is there's no visible laser beam. That's because it uses infrared light, not red or green light. And the laser fires pulses of infrared light that last only four nanoseconds. That's four billionths of a second. That allows it to deliver enough power in short bursts to vaporize whatever it hits. The sparks you see are actually a plasma, like on the sun. Supercam's telescope collects the light and puts it through a spectrometer, which can show what elements are present and how much of each. A bonus feature of the laser zapping is that it clears away the ever-present Martian dust. Here you can see the splotch that formed after Supercam did its work. The telescope on Supercam helps zoom in on the aftermath to look for where the holes actually formed. But in this case, the arm was also used to lower the Watson camera to within a few centimeters to give an even better look. Here are four of the holes that are easy to spot. And another bonus feature of Supercam is the microphone that it carries to record the sound of the zapping, which can be used to help gauge how soft the rocks have become from weathering. Here's an example from earlier in the mission. <laughs> 